guys, it's Kelly Lenneville here and I am back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we're going to be creating a one layer card with the Forest Friends stamp set and some of the uh, circle dies as well as the landscape borders dies. So I am part of the design team so this sample is what I was mailed. Your stamp set, if you purchase it in the store, will have um, the whole acetate complete. Mine just doesn't. So I've cut the, um, what is this, eclipse masking paper with the circle die and I've adhered that down to my card base so that I can just create a circular focal point. I also cut a mask for my tree and so I don't have to pull the tree on and off to get the good placement. I've just laid my mask over top of it and then um, adhered it that way. There's some cute little mushrooms that are also included in the set. I wanted to put a couple of those in front of the tree. So I'm just marking with a pencil where the uh, tree ends so that I can see for placement purposes. I'm going to be stamping in Intense Black Ink from Simon Says Stamp because it's Copic Safe. I'm going to be using a combination of um, Distress Oxides for my background and then Copic Coloring for my actual images. So I'm just going to stamp a couple of those mushrooms here on the right. I'm masking them as I go with that same Eclipse masking paper. And then I'm also going to stamp one on the left hand side, um, kind of behind the tree. So once I had those down, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tree mask. Now all of the mushrooms are masked. Um, so I can stamp the tree and the mushrooms will appear to be in front of it. Anytime that you're doing uh, any sort of one layer scene, you want to stamp what is called front to back. So what you want in the front, you stamp first. What you want in the back, you stamp last. I'm going to put my tree mask down here. And then that's all the stamping we're going to do for right now. We're going to move on to the background, which I chose to use the Distress Oxides just because they were... Um, just a little bit softer. I've also cut some masks. These are the, the landscape's borders die. So I use the hills and the clouds. For the hills, I kept both pieces. I'm going to adhere the bottom piece down where I want the actual grass to stop. And then I'm going to line up the other piece. This is really easy to do. Just line it up so that it masks the sky. I'm going to go in with some peeled paint, distress ink, um, distress oxide ink. Sorry, there is a difference. There's definitely a difference. And I'm concentrating most of the color um, more toward the edge of the circle, so more toward the right-hand side for the way it's positioned right now, so that the grass gets lighter as it goes back. Now I'm going to line up that same mask um, before, so that I can, as I used before, so that I can um, do the sky. So here I just, I knew that my um, card was going to be pretty simple as far as the colors that were included, so I thought I would add some more color with this cloud dye. So I'm putting on a little bit of worn lipstick distress ink, and then I'm going to use this um, basically mask that I've cut using the clouds, and I'm just going to move it around into different areas so that the cloud line isn't always the same. And I'm just going to bring it up just a tiny little bit from the mask. And so I'm starting with the worn lipstick. And like I said, I knew there wasn't going to be a ton of colors. So I just thought it would be fun to do a colorful sky. So from the worn lipstick, I moved to the Spice Marmalade. And then from the Spice Marmalade, I went to the Fossilized Amber. Which this one kind of ended up just looking like a little yellow rainbow. Just the way that I positioned <laughs> the cloud. And then the last one is the Broken China. Um, I knew that the Broken China was probably going to pick up some of the yellow and it might be a little bit more green. I was totally fine with it. The Broken China, I kind of dispersed sporadically around the background. And then once I was happy with however many little clouds I had going on, um, I'm also going to, um, because I want the edges to be solid. I want to, to clearly be able to see that circle. So I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not putting any extra ink on the foam pad. I'm just using what's there to kind of go around the edges lightly to really um, form that circle when you look at the card front. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of my masks now because I'm ready to get into the Copic coloring. So once I peel that back, you can see that it's just a nice clean circle that Eclipse Masking Paper works really well. There's a couple of different things that you can stamp into the center of your tree. I chose the raccoon because I thought he just kind of looked a little bit forlorn and um, this was going to be a missing you card. So I lined that up. Again, I'm stamping it with my mini Misty to get that perfect placement there in the center. And then we are just going to go ahead and move on to the Copic coloring. 
Now raccoons are traditionally darker animals, um, but I wanted there to be just a little bit of variation. So I pulled out my cool grays and I gave all of him, except for the inside of his ears, a once over with the C1. Now when I go start to do the shading for the lighter part of him, I'm going to start with a C3, but I'm going to leave little highlights right above um, kind of like the, where his eyebrows would be, little raccoon eyebrows, and then also um, just on the inside edge of where his ears are sticking up. The reason I'm putting this here is because this is going to be dark. You know, they have that, that black mask over their eyes. Um, his little hand's going to be dark. The back of his head is going to be dark. So I want to have some sort of definition, even though it is going to be um, a little bit on the darker side. So I'm adding, um, I'm just kind of adding my shading as if the light source was in the top right hand corner. So my shading is down into the bottom left. I'm working out to, um, from the C5, now we're onto the C7. And again, we're just adding a little bit of that color. The darkest color I use is going to be um, the C9. And even though it's not black, it will look black because of the way that we're shading it. And again, I was just conserving that highlight on his lightest parts. So where his snout is and then the area um, where his ears are. Just trying to make sure that I keep that light, keep that border of that highlight there to just kind of break that up so he doesn't look just completely black, like a blob, like he has just no definition whatsoever. So we're kind of moving out now from the darkest back out to the lightest. I'm going to fill in that whole area with the C1. And then on the black parts, the lightest part with a C5. Once he's done, I'm going to move on to the reds, which are going to be for, there's like two little flowers um, that are part of the tree stamp. And uh, I use my lens color to add just a little bit of pink to his ears. Um, and I chose, this is my favorite red combination, but this particular color kind of matches that worn lipstick. When you're coloring, um, because I have that circle going. So when I'm coloring at the edges, I'm being so careful to make sure that I don't have any kind of bleeding outside of that circle. Um, for those little flowers, I just did the lightest color and then the next darkest, so the R32 and the R35. For the mushrooms, I'm going to use the full range of colors all the way out to the R59. And again, I am, you know, coloring as if my light source was in the top right hand corner. So getting some highlights on the right hand side there where the light would be hitting them just to, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. And so the color doesn't look completely flat. There's not a lot of um, area here for these little mushrooms. You certainly don't have to use four colors. You could absolutely get away with two, three, if you're comfortable, a light, a medium and a dark. Um, but if you're not, don't worry about it. Um, the reds are very hard to clean up, and if you're not um, com confident in your ability to use them in small areas, it's not a big deal. I still think you can get great shading with just two markers. I'm using the C1 and the C3 to add a little bit of shading to the stalks of the mushrooms. The C3 will go directly underneath the cap of it, where it would be casting a shadow down on itself. For the hills, I felt like they were kind of blending into the clouds that I had going on. So I'm going to give them a little bit of definition with uh, these two uh, YG markers. So I'm doing some little blades of grass, which basically is just me putting the tip of the marker on the paper and then flicking out. It's um, It does take a little bit of practice, but once you have it down, you're, I mean, you're good to go. You can use it for so many things, and I use it a lot for my grasses. Um, and this just helps give that um, a little bit more definition, a little bit more depth. And I just let the um, the little flicks fade off as it moves further away. For the tree, um, I went to, this is like my go-to brown combination. Um, so I'm going to color the whole thing in with the lightest color, which is the E53. Um, just completely cover that. I'm not going to have any white on it at all. Again, being very, very careful around the areas. Um, that's the edge of that circle to make sure I don't have any bleeding outside of it and it stays a clean circle. I'm going to go in with the E55 and I'm going to use it to add shading where I want it to be the darkest eventually when we get there. So at the base of the tree, at the base of that um, little uh, broken off branch that's sticking out, and then also where that raccoon is sticking out, there's a hole. 
and it would be darker than all of the other areas on the tree. He needs to have something that he's coming out of. So I'm filling that in solid with this color. Then I'm going to start adding the details. So this particular tree stamp is drawn um, and it gives you a lot of guidelines. When you're coloring something that has guidelines, don't ignore them. Don't ignore them because it will look so awkward if you do. So as I'm coloring, um, which basically is just doing like mini strokes with the tip of my marker, um, little squiggly lines, something to give it some texture. But you'll notice I'm coloring each individual section as its own section. I'm not coloring it as a whole tree. I'm doing it piece by piece. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the way that the stamp is drawn, they go in different directions. So if I tried to um, do the strokes as um, like the one in the top right hand corner, the same as the one that's uh, around the raccoon, it would look strange because that's not the way the lines flow. So I filled in um, that area. I didn't color it in completely. I left the E55 around the edges, but I did add some E57 closer to the raccoon so that we can start to build up that depth so that he looks like he's popping out of the tree. I did the same thing uh, that I did with the E55. I colored the whole, um, covered the whole tree with those little lines. For the E59, I'm gonna be pretty selective about where I put it. I'm putting him right around the raccoon. And then I'm adding the same kind of strokes, the haphazard strokes, just at the base of the tree. And um, again, on the bottom of that branch that's sticking out. And then I'll add just a few around to the left-hand side of the um, hole that the raccoon is, is sticking out. I feel like it would be darker there, which it may not actually be, but I just thought it would be. So, you know, I did it anyway. I didn't even go back through with the 57 because it was so already saturated on there since I added such minimal amounts of the 59. So I'm blending everything out with the E55 and then again for the lightest parts going in with the E53. Copics are transparent so when you put a lighter color over a darker color it does lift it some so there is a purpose to that. I wanted to add some white highlights especially for the spots on the mushrooms um, they are kind of difficult to color around so I wanted to make sure they were a bright white I also added a little bit of a highlight on his nose I like to outline all of my images that's just me I like a bold black outline so I'm going in with an EK success journaling pen and outlining all of those just to help it um, stand out from the background I did not outline all of the lines in the trees I did not want to um, bring them to the forefront so I really just outlined the the tree in its entirety for the sentiment I wanted it to kind of round around the circle so I'm fixing that I adhered it to my acrylic block and then I just messed around with it until it fit the shape of that circle but I stamped my sentiment in some W plus nine uh, black dye ink and then once I did it I didn't really love the way that it was hanging out there by itself so I used a pencil to just kind of sketch a little bit of a border and then I'm going to go back in with that same EK Success writing pen and just kind of outline the circle. Now I will tell you that this is not perfect because I'm a person and I am not perfect, but it was good enough. I didn't have a die that would give me enough room um, to bring it down low enough to m hit the middle of that sentiment. So that's why I did it myself by hand. Um, that isn't something that you need to do. I just felt like the missing you was out there on its own and needed to be connected to the rest of the card. I'm going to use some black enamel accents to give my raccoon um, some eyes. So you just drop it down. Sometimes it can be a little bit stringy. I don't pull it up. I cut the string with my finger is what I do. So that way it's sure not to land on any other parts of my card. Then for the mushrooms because this is a one layer card and it's really pretty simple i just wanted to add you know just some something that would make it more interesting so i put some glossy accents on the mushrooms to make them kind of stand out and then i'm going to use some clear wink stella um along those clouds in my sky and then that's the whole card so it's pretty simple but i still kind of love the way that it turned out um this it's a cute little missing you card the little raccoon you know does look like he's definitely missing someone so thank you guys so much for joining me i appreciate you hanging out and i will catch you on the next video bye